to the share with you um, Sandblast uh, as it focuses on zero day threat protection. Uh, and we're gonna be focusing in this session on our network protections. So uh, Sandblast has been around uh, and, and utilized within the Checkpoint environment for nearly five years. Um, Checkpoint introduced Sandblast uh, as threat emulation back in 2013 um, on our network security gateways. And since that time, we've extended our zero day protection sets to many different areas and attack vectors, uh, including the endpoint in public and private cloud and on mobile devices, covering things such as web, email, phishing, lateral movement attacks, and other threat risks in your network and environment. So at the core of Sandblast is our sandboxing behavioral analysis. This is where we take a file out of a protocol stream, be it web, be it mail, detonate that file in a safe environment, watch for suspicious or malicious behavior, and determine if that file uh, is in fact benign or malicious uh, in intent. In addition to that, another key component is what we call threat extraction. This focuses on scrubbing active content from data files and rendering them neutralized. Now think about an attack vector in against your um, HR department or your purchasing department. One might be a weaponized PDF file with the bill materials or a weaponized doc file as a resume, um, you know, posing as someone looking for employment. Well, threat extraction will remove that active content that is used to weaponize it. VB script, macros, JavaScript, things that can be used to detonate that file and just present the data to the user. So between these two technologies, sandboxing that does the emulation and the behavioral analysis and deep, deep analysis of that file and threat extraction, which is very quick and presents the data to your users in a matter of seconds. This is Checkpoint's two, two layer approach. Now this is built upon our other security technologies that we've deployed and these can be leveraged on your existing security gateways uh, as a Checkpoint customer. Within our threat emulation engine and solution set, we have multiple components that work in conjunction with each other. One of the core components is CPU level threat detection. This is a patented technology that we actually leverage Intel's BTS, Branch Trace Store API, to look at CPU flow control, to look at the interaction between applications and the CPU to see if the application is attempting to break out of its operating system, to try, if it's trying to escalate its privileges, if it's trying to use exploits such as return-oriented programming, jump-oriented programming, and that can be done within seconds of the application or the document being opened. Push Forward is another technology we use that's focused on flash files. As you know, flash files are presented to a web page and are very dependent on the type of browser, the dynamic content of that page, who the user is, what they're accessing at that point in time, which makes it a challenge when we try to take that flash file by itself and, and any sandbox attempts to try to detonate and look for malicious content. Well, Push Forward technology is designed to make the flash file continue to detonate, continue to operate, even if it would normally exit because it didn't receive the right parameters, it didn't, wasn't uh, in the right environment, the wrong version of Internet Explorer, for instance, or wasn't communicating and receiving the, uh, the proper feedback uh, from wherever it was communicating with. So Push Forward will drive the flash execution until it either finishes and completely uh, does all of its activities 
or it's determined to be malicious. It reaches a point where it starts execution that we've determined is malicious. And, and this, again, is unique to Checkpoint. We also have contents awareness. We call this cadet. Uh, this is where the file is coming from, who's the sender, who's the recipient, and what context is that this information being presented. And we can evaluate not just the payload, but how it's being sent, who it's being sent to, and make intelligent decisions based upon that. Now, this is built upon multitudes of additional engines and technologies, machine language learning, artificial intelligence, and other detection capabilities built within our sandbox um, solution set. Checkpoint solution is one of prevention, not just detection. We can be deployed in line. We can be deployed in a prevent mode in, a, in an ability to hold the files before they're introduced to eliminate victim zero. Many competitive solutions can identify a malicious file, but only after it's passed into your environment and has potentially infected someone uh, inside. Our solutions can be deployed in line for HTTP using MTA for um, mail transfer agent for mail or through APIs in the cloud. Files that are identified as malicious can be quarantined and this can be done on multiple devices be it a desktop, a laptop, a mobile device. Threat extraction, when I mentioned that we remove active content from files with threat extractions, we can do that in one of two ways. In clean mode, where we keep the document in its native format, an Excel spreadsheet is an Excel spreadsheet, a Word document it's a Word document, or we convert it and flatten it to a PDF file and neutralize any active contents. Either method is valid. What that looks like within an email, is something like this. There would be a banner saying that the email was attachment was scrubbed or cleaned by a checkpoint gateway. We would add the word clean to the file. That file could then be viewed, in this case, as a PDF and active content is removed. Now, if the user needed to get the original, that's available as well. It's through a self portal that doesn't require any help desk or operations and so long as the original was determined by our sandbox solution to be benign the user has access to the original and I'll be demonstrating that as well don't just take my word for it um, our solutions have been tested by third-party organizations such as NSS labs in their latest breach prevention system test at the end of last year, Checkpoint ranked number one in overall performance and cost to deploy as, as it compared to other leading competing solutions in this space. So as I mentioned, we're focusing uh, in, in this demonstration on our network technology. We're gonna show you threat emulation and extraction we're going to show you some deployment strategies for the, this technology. So I mentioned this earlier. If you are a Checkpoint customer and you have Checkpoint gateways in your environment, you can deploy Sandblast right on that gateway. We can do the emulation at our cloud, at our data center, where we do the emulation. You're not, we're not using um, the horsepower of your security gateway to do this. The detonation of files and the inspection of files is done um, at Checkpoint. We can also deploy local sandbox appliances. We call that the TE appliances. They can be used so you maintain confidentiality, you, main, you maintain uh, control of the documents at your data center on site. Threat Cloud is our threat intelligence that feeds our security gateways and also supplies real-time updates as newly identified zero days uh, have been 
identified and presented down via our customers globally around the world. Again, this ties into your important protocol streams, primary focuses on HTTP, HTTPS, and mail SMTP. Uh, we can also provide a highly available, scalable solution um, by deploying multiple appliances that work in conjunction in a load sharing manner so that the solution can scale and support multiple gateway points within your environment, branch offices, remote offices, data center, and whatnot. If you are not a Checkpoint customer, we can be deployed in line using a TE appliance standalone behind your current security solution. We can be deployed in layer two or layer three and inspect the web and mail traffic that, that is coming in, doing local sandboxing uh, on demand. Same, uh, same threat intelligence feeds into that environment, uh, providing protection for your mail and web-based users. We also support ICAP. If you're a proxy user, such as Bluecoat, we can, we can tie in using ICAP and inspect files that are being downloaded by your users through that particular proxy and provide you with zero-day protections um, using the ICAP protocol. Okay, that's pretty much of my uh, slides. Now I'd like to cut over and look at the uh, demo environment. So Nir, if there's any questions at this point, um, maybe we can stop for a second and answer a question or two. Okay, let me, let me see. No, we're, uh, we're good, you can continue. All right, perfect. Thank you, Rich. Yeah, so here is our um, demo environment that uh, we've set up for you today. We have an R8010 uh, network security gateway that's going to be uh, doing emulation in our cloud. We have a victim system who's also the administrator of the gateway that's protected by the R8010 gateway. We have an attacker that's external to it, and then we will have an e-commerce server and a web server hosting some malicious files that we're gonna be pulling from. So that, that's our uh, environment. So I'm gonna jump over to our, our cloud share and uh, start going through a couple different scenarios. So the first scenario that I'd like to walk through is one where I'm taking a resume file, I'm creating a, a variant uh, of a malicious attack using that resume file, and I'm going to mail it into this internal organization and hope to try to get a, uh, a foothold into their HR department. That's the first scenario here. So my first step is that I'm gonna create a variant uh, of my file. And so I have this nice little tool that you see here, resume.doc. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I wanna modify resume.doc. And I'm gonna feed it with some random characters here. And as you, you can see here, my hash, my MD5 hash has changed. The original hash is the top line. The new hash is the bottom line here. So we, I've, I've created a variant. And, that, and this is one technique that hackers can use to create a variant of uh, existing malware, to make something that uh, is previously known to unknown so we can bypass traditional signature-based security controls, such as antivirus. Okay, now that I've created my variant, I wanna test it. So I'm gonna open up Chrome, and I'm gonna jump over to VirusTotal. Now, if you're not familiar with VirusTotal, uh, Google's created this wonderful tool that you can take any file, any URL, and present it against a number of security engines to determine if that file contains malicious content or has been seen before as malicious. So we're going to choose our file. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to go to my malicious folder, and I'm going to get my resume.doc. 
and I am going to scan it. We've uploaded the file. And you can see, okay, here's the file, and it is now being analyzed. And as you can see, it's being run against multiple AV solutions, and green means it's not detected, which means I'm my variant is effective. Okay, and I'm I'm going down here, going down. You can see uh, nobody nobody's caught me, and so zero detections out of 59 engines. So that that's pretty effective as a, as an, an attack vector here. All right, so let's launch our attack. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up mail, and here is step one. This is my first attack vector. Now I'm actually, uh, um, you know, sharing something here that. Guess what? This resume file is not actually just a resume file. Um, it is actually a repurposed archive file. It is actually a zip file that I'm masquerading as a doc file. And I'm going to show, and not only that, but it is password protected. And I'm going to show you that I'm going to send this across and that we're going to have the ability to run a dictionary attack against the archive, be able to open up the archive, scan the files that are within the archive and determine if that's malicious or not. So let's send that file across. So I'm going to I'm going to send it over who, you know, here's a candidate, res, I'm sending my resume, this is a, you know, a phishing mail. I I want them to open up the file. So we'll we'll send that over, boom, off it goes. Now let me jump over to my victim system. Remember from my uh, illustration, that's behind the, the gateway. And I mentioned that the victim is also the administrator of the firewall. So I'm going to bring up our management console here. And I want to move over to our policies to show you what security I'm enforcing on the gateway. So, um, we have a firewall policy in, in enforce and I have a threat prevention policy. So I'm, I'm gonna actually jump over to the threat prevention policy. And within the threat prevention policy, you can see here I have uh, one labeled, a profile labeled Sandblast. And we're gonna edit that profile. And within that profile, I can show you that we have sandboxing, threat emulation enabled, and we have anti-bot enabled. And if I go down into threat emulation, I can show you that we're scanning web and we're scanning mail traffic, okay? And we're, we're set to a prevent. So we're set to prevent for high and medium confidence matches, all right? And so that's the policy that we currently have enforced. Now, let's go down to my mail on my user. And here I've received the mail, stage one. And notice, well, the attachment looks a little different now, doesn't it? This, is, this isn't the uh, resume.doc file. So if I open this up, you can see here, Original attachment, resume.doc, was found to be malicious. So I can close this message. So we've removed the original attachment, uh, protecting the user from that malicious content. Now, what does that look like from a administrator standpoint? So let's go to logs. Let's update, refresh our logs. And so here, I have a threat emulation, SMTP emulation event, critical, high confidence level, prevent. I can show you, here's the original file, resume.doc. Here's the file, it was, notice it's actually a zip. I told you it, it was an archive. And here's the sender, here's the recipient, sent, sent via mail. And it, uh, it uh, was blocked by our sandbox solution set. 
Now, what I'd like to do now is try to open up uh, a forensic report and show you uh, what the forensic report looks like for that particular attack vector. And so when we detonate a file um, within the sandbox, we will forensically collect the data from that file and, and provide a forensic report of what was seen uh, within that sandbox. And so we'll, we'll do that for each operating system. Uh-oh. All right, well, Murphy's hit. Uh, so let me, uh, let me quickly log in again. But I'm actually prepared for this. I have a backup. And while we're connecting back into the server, let me shoot over here and bring up the report. Okay, so this is what the threat report's gonna look like. Resume.doc, verdict malicious, action prevent, high confidence, classified as a Trojan from paypalsecurityshop.com. There, there's the email, stage one password protected archive file to IPS, it's actually resume.doc. Now notice the top level is only one file. It's not, there's not a lot of information here, but if I click on that, this will drill down into the file within the archive and show, all right, we detonated this on Windows XP and Windows 7. We determined that there was malicious embedded macros within the Word document. Suspicious files were accessed during emulation. Registry, registry modifications were done during emulation. And it was a, there was a reputation check, well-known malware. In fact, we actually have an emulation slideshow within the sandbox. This steps through what we saw execute during the detonation. And there you go. After it popped up, there's a crypto locker pop up um, showing um, that a macro was being run and some malicious content was being executed. So let me jump back out of that and minimize this. All right, so let's go back to our cloud share environment and let's, let me go back to our attacker. Let me close or minimize Outlook and just for giggles, I wanna show you what that would have looked like. Th this is the file that uh, was within the archive if I detonate the file, okay, boom, there you can see. Um, so the file uh, actually had a macro. Uh, it was using Visual Basic, uh, built on built on top, uh, built on top of a resume. Okay, and you can see it it, uh, it kind of crashed uh, Word there, so that's not a good thing. So that that's what the original uh, original file looked like and did. All right, so um, my next step is to enable threat extraction, and we're gonna utilize threat extraction within this process. So remember that threat extraction works in combination with uh, emulation. We're, at, we're actually going to do uh, a, uh, a combination of um, threat extraction with threat emulation and show, show that um, we're using that in conjunction with each other. This is our security gateway. 
This is where we're doing enforcement on. My environment uh, must be a little low in the cloud with memory here because the gateway object is uh, not fully uh, displaying here. Bear with me a moment here. All right, um, I'm actually not getting the uh, uh, threat prevention policy to come out within the, the GUI. Let me relaunch and see if I can get it to display. I apologize for the delay here, folks. All right, there we go. Thank you. All right, so what we need to do is to add threat extraction to our threat prevention policy. We need to enable threat extraction here. Select OK. We're going to install the policy. Publish. And we're going to install. And while that's doing that, I'm gonna get ready for our second attack. So let's go over to our attacker. I'm gonna take step two. I'm going to attach that uh, threat extraction demo doc, the one that I opened up on my attacker system. You saw that that had active content within it. Um, and let's jump over and make sure our policy, okay. So our policy installation has started here. We have to wait for the installation to complete. Okay, there we go, 40%. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using uh, emulation with extraction. Extraction is going to um, scrub the file, give us the file within a couple seconds, and then emulation is gonna happen in the background. Now, emulation can, or extraction can happen uh, in line with in uh, web when we, when we use uh, threat extraction in line, all right, and we've installed that, and on an MTA for mail. All right, let's send our file over.
All right, folks, as, as you can see, uh, my cloud share environment has decided not to uh, um, behave with us right now. Uh, so um, basically what uh, Threat Extraction is gonna do is remove the active content from the file um, and, and provide it in a, a native form. If I jump over to my um, desktop that I have, and if I browse for some documents, um, I have Threat Extraction available as part of uh, a browser download, and I can demonstrate what that looks like here, at least on my uh, native uh, desktop. You can see here that doc file was converted to a PDF, and this is how quickly it should work when, when your cloud environment's working correctly. Uh, you can see that the doc file um, was converted to a PDF, and um, all any active content from that file was stripped out and removed. So at the same time, I can go back and now this is through a, a browser plugin. You can see here, here's the original. Um, once the original has been analyzed through Sandblast, you can get the original, and as long as the original was benign, um, I can get the original file downloaded uh, to the downloads folder on Chrome in this case. So once that's done, it'll automatically drop in my downloads folder. All right, so let's see if my, uh, environment here with CloudShare has come back. All right, let's, uh, well, it claims it's ready. Maybe that one connection just wasn't uh, working for us here. Well, lo and behold, thank you. Send the thread extracted file. Go over to their victim. Let's go to my mail. Let's make sure my policy actually did install. I believe it did. Okay, threat extraction, it is there. All right, here it is, uh, threat extraction. Um, here's the banner that we add. This email attachment for clean of potential threats by checkpoint uh, gateway. Uh, here's the clean document, so I can open this up and show you the document that had uh, been weaponized with, uh, with the macro, um, and as you can see here, uh, it, uh, uh, it actually was scrubbed and uh, doesn't contain uh, any active content, so we're looking uh, through a PDF viewer here. All right. And we'll close that. And then now let's say I wanted to still get the original and we know the original is malicious here. So if the user attempts to get the original, um, we will still block it. So Here's what their, their experience would look like. They go to a, a policy page. There are two files that were extracted, a doc file and an image file. Um, and I want to try to get the original file. I need the original. And click confirm. All right, notice 
uh, threat extraction demo doc, it was blocked. File is malicious. So even if the user attempts to get it, we will block it knowing that um, the, uh, the file had it, uh, the file was malicious in intent. The image file was okay, we could grab that, but we can't get the original of that um, doc file. Okay, my last example is a, a link within a mail. So here we have, looks like a, a link to a statement. And this link goes to a malicious file. Uh, and so we're gonna forward this on to the user. Now in this case, the user is not gonna get the mail. We're going, to, we're going to remove the mail out of the queue. The user will not get it, uh, but we will report on it. So if I go back to logs and monitoring, and I update our logs, okay. We actually, we actually had it right here. And you can see here, uh, stage three links to inside mail. Um, and we downloaded a file that was associated, uh, had lots of stuff. Oh, you can see it, it's, uh, it's WannaCry. It's ransomware that was associated with that link for that phishing link. Okay, and here's the link. Here's the executable link that was uh, leading to the malicious file. And there, that the fact it was an executable, the file size, the MD5, who the send, sender was, was sent via, um, originally email, but down, downloaded a link from the mail. And so we capture that, presented that, uh, and, and give you that visibility uh, through our management console. That's pretty much the scenarios that I have on the network side. I apologize for the uh, uh, issue with CloudShare in the middle there, but uh, we were able to recover from that, uh, connect back, and uh, uh, finish the last two examples. So I'd like to open it up uh, now for any questions that you might have. Okay, I see one question um, about other protocols. So, um, sand, uh, sandboxing with Sandblast supports SM SMTP, SMTP with TLS, HTTP, HTTP uh, uh, S. Uh, we support uh, SIFs, SMB SIFs, um, and there is a custom. Uh, custom build for FTP. It's not part of mainstream. Um, those are the protocols that are supported today. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. Um, if you have any other questions, please uh, forward them on to either myself uh, or to Nir, and we'd be glad to get back to you with that information. Thank you very much, Rich, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, as Rich said, we will follow up. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to uh, send me an email. Um, and uh, I'll make sure you receive the, all the answers. And um, I will send everyone the recording uh, after, the after this session uh, later on today. So uh, with this, thank you again, and have a great rest of the day, guys. Bye-bye.